Hi, you guys. Um, we are starting a probability, or we're continuing a probability unit. So this is probability of compound events. So the first thing we need to do that when we talk about compound events is um, if events are independent or dependent. So independent means they do not affect each other. So for example, rolling a dice and pulling a card. I guess we'd say the word drawing, not pulling. They are independent of each other. They do not affect each other. So those would be considered independent events. Probability of dependent events are events where the two events affect each other. So we could say drawing two cards in a row. without replacing the first card. So what you draw the first time does affect what you draw the second time. So that's a probability of independent and dependent events. You want to make sure you write down these formulas. So now we're going to take a second to practice identifying independent and dependent events. So a box contains tiles labeled A through the Z. A tile is randomly chosen from the box and set aside. Then another tile is selected. So event A is the first selection of the tile being G, the, section, second, section, the second selection of a tile being labeled Z. So we're deciding if these are independent or dependent. What I pull the first time does affect what I pull the second time because I am not replacing them. This set aside is key because it's making it clear that we aren't putting the tile, the first tile back in. Paperclip is randomly selected from a container and then thrown away. Then another is chosen. So the first clip is black and the second clip is white. Those are dependent because what I draw the first time does affect what I get the second time since we are throwing them away. A spinner has numbers one through nine and is spun twice. It lands on five and then lands on eight. Every time I roll, what I spin the first time does not affect what I spin the other times, so that is an independent. I want you guys to pause your screen. Try these last two on your own. So she returns the cards back to the deck. So what is drawn the first time does not affect what is drawn the second time. We replace the beans, so since we put them back in the bag, what is drawn the first time does not affect what is drawn the second time, so they are independent events. So, um, a number cube is rolled and a coin is tossed. The number cube and the coin are fair. What is the probability that we roll? The number rolled is less than five, and the coin tossed is heads. So, I'm going to think of this. We have an and in there, so we want probability of a head and number less than five. So I'm thinking, are these events independent or dependent? The dice and the cube, or the dice and the coin do not affect each other, so I'm going to use this equation. So I'm going to do probability of head times probability of number less than 5. So I know probability of a head is 1 out of 2. I'm thinking there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. A number less than 5 is any of these 4. 
So this tells me probability of number less than five is four, six. So four out of six, I would multiply straight across and get four out of 12, which is a one third chance of getting a head and a number less than five. Okay, I want you guys to read this problem on your own. And decide which equation we would use. So we want probability of um, so probably really of clear water, no license, and Mountain view, yes, license. No one fishes at both parks, so what this tells me is that they can't affect each other, so they're independent events. So I'm going to do probability of clear water, no license, mountain view, yes, license. So of everyone at clear water, there's 24 plus 16 people there. No one has a license. Or, yeah, 16 don't have license. Of the people at Mountain Point, we want yes license. 40 have a license. And there's 40 plus 10 people there total. So this ends up being 0.4 times 0 0.8 this is 0 0.32 is our probability of clear water no license and mountain view less yes license okay i want you guys to go ahead and read the question and decide These events are independent or dependent. So we're doing the probability of first in first winner in Pike. And second winner in Wells. So we're taking the time to think, does the first winner affect the second winner? It does, because once we have a first winner, there's not as many second winners. 
So this is probability of first winner in Pike. And this becomes probability. One second. And this becomes probability of we would word this as second winner wells given first winner is in pike. So we need to think about how many people we have. We have nine customers total. The first winners and three of those are in Pike. But once I draw one, I only have eight. Once I draw a winner, given that one of them was already from Pike, there's four that are in wells. This will get me 12 over 72 or 1 6. So this is the given. We think of that line there as probability of event B given A. Okay, we have a six-sided die set face labeled one to six will be rolled once. The six possible outcomes are listed below. Each outcome has the same probability. So we're going to um, check how many, there's six outcomes, but how many uh, would we get if we rolling an odd number? One, three, five are odd numbers, so it's one half. Rolling a number greater than three would be four, five, and six, so that's one half for three out of six, three out of six. Rolling an odd number and a number greater than so that gets us only five, which is one six. Rolling in an odd number or rolling a number greater than three. So an odd number is one, three, five, or a number greater than six or greater than three. We get five, six. So it wants us to find the probability of A, which is three, six, plus probability of B, which is three, six, minus probability of A and B, one, six, equals five, six. And that was the same as a probability of A or B because we had this as five, six. So what this basically helped us find is the equation for probability of A or B. So this is similar to what we just did. The Venn diagram shows 16 states that are represented, or 16 students that are in Miss Gray's class. The diagram shows people in volleyball. Ma, Milan is outside the circles because they are because he is not a member of tennis or volleyball. So A is going to be students that are in tennis. B is going to be students that are in volleyball. So probability of A is out of all of these students.
Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have ten out of the sixteen students are on event A. B would be volleyball one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine out of the sixteen. I cannot simplify that. A or B would be fifteen out of the sixteen because it's everyone but Milan. A and B would be one, two, three, four. Four out of sixteen. Probability of A is ten out of sixteen. Actually, I'm going to do the work for this one up here. Probability of A is 10 out of 16. Probability of B is 9 out of 16. A and B is 4 out of 16. And that ends up equaling 15 out of 16. Which we see is the probability of A or B. because that is this. So we've basically seen this idea from the last two slides. The probability formulas, we've done this one. We just added this one. This is the one we just talked about. Probability of A or B can be found with this equation. So go ahead and add this to wherever you wrote your other probability formulas. And we're gonna start practicing that. At a restaurant, 50% of customers order appetizer and 30, 39 order dessert. 52% order an appetizer or dessert. What is the probability that they order both? So we need to go ahead and identify what is what. We're going to do probability of A equals an app. Probability of B equaling dessert. So we're going to look at each of these. Ordering an app, so that's the probability of A. Ordering a dessert is probability of B. 82% order an app or dessert. So that's probability of A or B. And what it wants to know is an A. A and B. So what it's asking is what is the probability of A and B? So I can fill in what I know. Right here answer is decimal. So A is 0 0.5. B is 0 0.39. We don't know A and B. We do know A or B is 0 0.52. So I can go ahead and combine like terms. And basically now I want to try to isolate that. So I'm just doing basic algebra to get that. And I know that then I can divide everything by negative 1. It would become that. So we have a dartboard. Um, equally sliced numbers from 1 to 8. Some are white and some are gray as shown below. Write the answer to the questions. Um, what's probably the dart lands on a gray slice? So there's eight slices total, and five of them are gray.
What is the probability that it lands on a gray slice given that the dart given that the dart lands in a number less than seven? So it can't land on those two. So given that it's something less than seven, I have six options and there's one, two, three, four of those are gray or two thirds. So this table was made up of 70 students. The probability of no sports is going to be 28 plus 7 over the 70 students. Um, 35 over 40. Probability of male and no sports is 28 out of 70, or 0 0.4. And then this last one is asking, given no sports, so of my no sports people, how many of them are male? So remember, this line here means given. Um, this is one that ties back with what we were doing earlier. Oh no. An automotive uh, manufacturing plant produces 38 vehicles today. 12 are sedans, 9 are vans, and 14 are trucks. Plant managers are going to select two of these vehicles for a thorough inspection. The first vehicle is selected at random. The second vehicle will be selected at random from the remaining vehicles. What is the probability that two sedans will be selected? So we need to think if these are independent or dependent events. Um, uh, the probability of these are dependent, so probability of Sudan Sudan first and Sudan second. So it's going to be the probability of a Sudan first. Times the probability of Sudan second. Given that the first was the Sudan. So a Sudan first, there's 12 vehicles that are sedans out of the 35. So given that the first one, now I only have 34 vehicles a second time, and given that a sedan was taken, it goes down from 12 sedans to 11 sedans. And this ends up being 0 0.111. It asks us to round it to three decimal places.